Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles, chapter 1. Are you ready? Let's go. Jesus, right from the start. <clears throat> Anybody listening? Jimmy? Olivia? Okay, we'll learn about Jesus right from the start. The story of Jesus didn't start with a baby in a manger. Nope, not with a shining star hung over a stable, not with shepherds watching sheep sleep. <laughs> and it certainly doesn't start with the three wise guys and their gold frankincense and myrrh. Every kid thinks Jesus' story starts at Christmas time because, well, we like Christmas presents. Yahoo! But Jesus' story actually starts before the beginning of time. Long before there were books or bathtubs or skateboards or purple shag carpets, long before cheeseburgers or pizza or cookies with sprinkles, long before anything else ever was, Jesus was. Jesus existed before anything was created. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Now we all got to get really brainy here. Even Jimmy, the astonishing sneeze machine, because usually we just say that God was there before anything else, and when we say God, we're thinking about God the Father. But here's the mysterious idea to wrestle with. God in three persons, a.k.a. the Trinity. My Grandpa McCook once told me that there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all three were there as the Great One before anything else existed. That, that means Jesus' story starts way back then. Because Jesus is God the Son. Well, Jesus' story actually has no start because he's eternal. Which means any start point you can name, Jesus was there before that. We don't know exactly what God's Son did back then. But he didn't just hang out in heaven killing time until he wrapped himself up in a human body and came to earth as a baby? Nope. The Bible says that Jesus is supreme over all creation and that God created everything through Jesus. Jesus made the things we can see and the things we can't see. Hey, just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Think about it. We can't see gravity, but it's real. Throw an apple up and stand directly underneath it. You'll know gravity is what, real when that apple lands on your head. It's a thunk. Gravity is something Jesus created. That's Kirby getting ready to get pelted by an apple. We can't see air or love or hate or radio waves or subatomic particles like those whatchamacallits, quarks. <laughs> Thanks for shouting that out, Timmy. Oh, it's Jimmy. It was Jimmy. It shouted that. You do use that incredible brain sometimes. Quarks are even tinier than atoms. And all those unseeable things are, are real. We can't see God the Father, but he's real. What's one way we know God is real? Because Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus radiates God's glory and expresses God's character. God the Father had a job for Jesus in the beginning. Jesus gave life and breath to everything. That's right. Jesus was the designer and creator. Jesus was the amazing person who made this whole universe out of this, get this, nothing. Yep, his raw material was a big bunch of nothing. We don't know exactly how Jesus did it, but we have to know for sure that when the universe came to be, the Father started it all through Jesus. The bell rang and we all noticed Grandpa McCook talking to Mr. Javier, the children's minister outside of our classroom window, so we all silently left, wide-eyed, wondering what would happen next week. Oh, Kirby has some notes. Stick inside your brain. Christ is the, is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation, for through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. And this reference is Colossians 1, 15 and 16 in the Bible. Want to read more? You could read John 1, 1 to 3, Acts 17, 24, 
or Hebrews 1, verses 2 to 3 and 10. Stay tuned for Chapter 2, Jesus Makes Dinosaurs.